welcome to The Source Live. We are Ralph and Joanne Hone, and we're so glad you joined us today. Hey man, guess what? The greatest day <laughs> of the year, Father's Day! Happy Father's Day weekend. We are so thrilled that you've joined us. Uh, if you're a father or a grandfather or, a father or, or somebody that wants to become a father, we want to say happy Father's to you. Father's Day to you in advance. We do. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. But right now, we're actually going to continue in our story series. And today, I am super, super excited because this is one of my very favorite messages, one of my very favorite topics to preach on, and it's called Dry Bones. And what it is, is it's giving us practical ways of finding out how to get those dead places in our lives back to life. So let's jump in, and I hope you enjoy. Ezekiel is a prophet in the Old Testament. And it's interesting because Ezekiel means God strengthens. And all names mean have a lot of significance in the Old Testament. But Ezekiel was a prophet. And uh, the book, the whole book of Ezekiel is a prophetic book. And it really is like the Old Testament version of the New Testament book of Acts. Now in the book of Acts is when the Holy Spirit came down and the supernatural church was birthed and that's where the church as we know it today was birthed. It was in that book of Acts and the Holy Spirit was powerful and all these amazing things were happening. Well, Ezekiel is is the Old Testament kind of model of what the Holy Spirit was all about. But to this point, um, we're going to be talking in Ezekiel 37, but up to chapter 36, you know, what's happened is Israel have been really bad, okay? And so the children of Israel, God's people, had been rebellious and all of these things. And they had been in horrible places and had to go through horrible things and um, being defeated by enemies and all of this stuff because of their rebellion. Now, the interesting thing is we often talk about, you know, the nation of Israel was angering God. But the bottom line is, is the nation of Israel was made up of a lot of individual people, right? A nation is the people. And it was those individual people's sin and rebellion against God that made a big picture of this nation having God having to turn his face from this nation, right? So what we, the, the thing for us right now is we want God to shine on our nation, right? And a nation is not cursed or anything else or blessed because of the nation, it is blessed or cursed because the people in the, the nation, right, of their own sin or of their own repentance and seeking God, right? So the, there started to be a turn and God said, okay, enough is enough. I am going to go back to honoring and blessing my children. And so what he does is in Ezekiel 36, he, um, God appears to have, it appears to have been that God took him to a mountaintop, Ezekiel. And he started showing him and he says, look over here and look over there. And he started prophesying and telling him all the amazing things he was going to do. He was going to restore the people. He was going to restore his children. He was going to, he was going to bless them and they would not be cursed again. And he was going to just, he was like, it was amazing. This is like God sitting you down and going, okay, everything you've ever desired, I'm about to do it. But that's a good moment, right? That's like, Yes. Okay, you know, so he's saying that. He says, all the trouble you've gone through, you're not even going to remember it because it's going to be so good with what I do, okay? So he's painting this amazing, amazing picture. And so it's pretty exciting. Wouldn't you be pretty excited? Yeah. Okay, so you're at this mountaintop experience of like, yes, finally, you know, finally we have good news to bring to the people. God's not angry. He's actually going to turn this all around for us. It's a good day. Well, the problem is chapter 37 comes. Chapter 37, this is what happens. Verse 1, the Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. Okay, so bones are, what do they represent? Death, right? Death, it represents death. So it's a strange place to go from this mountaintop experience and all of the great things God's going to do. And all of these things, and you would think he would take him right to the people of Israel and go, okay, guys, this is going to be good. Guess what God said? But instead, he took him kind of backwards into a valley where it's surrounded by death. You know, and sometimes we have those experiences with God. You come to church, you have this encounter with God, and it's like, whoa, 
right? There's amazing God showing you things and he's speaking things. And then all of a sudden, the next day you go back and you face the dry bones in your life. Those things that are dead, right? You come on a high from church and all of a sudden you get home and you have a family member who just starts cussing you out. And it's like, whoa, like, no, there's, there's supposed to be Jesus all around me. You're not allowed to be like that, right? But yet these dry bones keep coming at us even when we're in that, that moment, okay? So the interesting thing is, because here, like, we're, we're, we're seeing God move. And we're seeing revival start in our nation. But that does not mean we're not going to have issues and dry things and troubles that come at us that we have to deal with. Because here, what God's trying to do is he's saying, he's got a plan, believe it or not. Okay, he hasn't taken him to the valley of the dry bones and put him there and then left him there. No, he's got a plan. And so what you and I have to realize is we, we have to go, okay, so where is God going with this? When I'm facing a hard situation, when something seems dead in my life, where is God? What's the bigger picture? Okay, we have to look at the bigger picture. So God deliberately took him to this valley. Okay, this, many times we hit something hard in our life and we're like, what the enemy you know devil's at every corner well what if god put you there for a specific reason what if he put you in touch with that person for a specific reason that you're just not seeing the big picture of what if he put you at that job with all these ornery people for a specific purpose we got to start looking at maybe there we're in the middle of some dry bone situations because god wanted us to be there but now we have to look at why he wanted him there. So verse 2. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Okay, I'm going to stop there just and pause for a second. Completely dried out. There were bones everywhere. Okay, so in other words, here. It's not one dead thing that is around your life. Okay, now you got another dead thing. And God's showing you, it's like showing you all the things that aren't working in your life. He's like, right, like, what? Like, God, wasn't it enough for me just to really feel kind of insecure about that issue? But now it's this and this and this and my workplace and my relationships and my family and my finances. My goodness, God, why are you showing me everything that's going wrong right now? Because these are dry. Now, these are dry bones are things like, it says they were very dry bones very dry so in other words these bones didn't just die yesterday and maybe there's a chance you can resuscitate them they didn't dry and die an hour ago and maybe some cpr can bring them back they're gone this is like you having such deep debt you were born with debt okay and you can't even possibly see a way out of it it's that dry and that dead you are so you know it is your family seems so far your child has been gone or your spouse or a family member has been so far off the radar living the worst life ever for so long it seems so impossible you considered them dead to you because it seemed impossible Okay, we're talking about dead, dead, dead. Things that dreams that you had years ago that you gave up on because there's just no way. It didn't happen. So, Okay, so we're talking about really, really, really dry, dry places in your life. That hopelessness. When you've been traumatized, when you've gone through so much abuse and so much insecurity and so much shame that you can't even imagine that there's more to life where you want to give up. We're talking that kind of dry, okay? But then verse 3. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? Oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Okay, so this is Ezekiel. This is the prophet. And God says, can I do it? Can I turn that situation around? Can I turn your family member around? Can I get you out of that financial debt? Can I restore your heart again? Do you think I can? And Ezekiel's honest. He says, I don't know. Essentially, I don't know if you can do it, God. Only you know. And maybe there's something in your life where you're like, God is he's saying, hey, do you think I can turn that situation around? And in your heart of hearts, you're honestly going, I don't know. Like, I've been there. Like, really, God? Like, this is a big one. Right? We've all been there. But here he's saying, 
I honestly don't know. And maybe you honestly don't know if God can bring some things back to life. But I want to see what God took him through and what happened here. Because see here, the valley represented judgment. It represented death. This army of people had died in this. It was full of death. There was no hope. But now hope was coming. So if we go to verse 4. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Okay, guys, this is freaky. (laughs) Right? Like, okay, we're reading this and we're all like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's in the Bible. Yeah, okay. No, these bones were coming back together. Can you imagine? Like standing there and all of a sudden it's like, uh (laughs) uh-oh. Right? Okay, let's just put ourselves in the story a little bit. Okay? So then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed around the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. This is wild. So these guys, these bones, like dry, dry bones, because, you know, the scripture was very clear to say it was very dry bones. Now suddenly they're back together with skin and muscle and tissue, and they look like human beings. Anyone else think it's a little freaky? Do you think this is a little bit impossible? So how many of you know, if he can do that with literal dry bones, he could maybe resurrect something in your life too, right? Okay. Verse nine, then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Okay, freak out moment. (laughs) They all came back to life. You see, Ezekiel stood and witnessed this miracle simply by doing what the Lord told him to do. And saw this amazing miracle of life where there was death. But these dry bones coming back to life represent the spiritual rebirth of the remnant. The ones who are serving God where it seems like it's just been, you've been forgotten. You feel like there's just been stuff that has not happened and you've been seeking God and it's just not happening. I'm telling you, this is very significant because this is the time we are in where God is. And I've told this before, the Lord, the word the Lord gave me for 2022 was fulfillment. He wants to restore some things that have been dead in our lives. He wants to fulfill the promise he gave us. But there's some things we're going to have to get into agreement with and do in order to see this fully, fully come to be. You know, revival, dreams that you've had, situations that just aren't seem to changing. God wants to change all of those. Now, God could have, we would think, God could have just had Ezekiel watch and say, hey, Ezekiel, watch this. Look what I'm going to do. He could have, right? And that's what we often think God will do. Well, God knows my problem. He's just going to take care of it. But he didn't. He had to have Ezekiel involved in this process. And Ezekiel had to do what Ezekiel could do. And then God did what only God can do. Too many people are missing out on what God has for you. You're missing out on the miracle. You're missing out on the, on the blessing that he has because we're sitting waiting for God to do something. But you know what? He gave all authority to you and I. That's back in Genesis, right? So when people wonder, why is there starvation in the world? Why are all these things? It's because his children aren't rising up and taking our authority to overcome the enemy and his plans and standing up and declaring and speaking the answer that he's asking us to speak. Because the first thing here is he told Ezekiel, you speak this message. Okay. So he had a part to play. 
Ezekiel had to speak to those. So I want you to look. Because God did not put his breath into it until Ezekiel had spoken. Until it had all happened. Okay? You got to understand this. So there's a couple things we're going to break down. First of all, he spoke God's words. Not what he felt or saw to the situation specifically and directly. Ooh! I follow some of you guys on in, on, on social media. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's the feelings that come out. You guys are much better at it than some other people I know from, we're not going to talk about them. But God didn't say here, talk about, he didn't say, Ezekiel, I want you to speak how dry these bones are. You see, Ezekiel had to speak what God said to speak. So over your situation, God has spoken. That's the word of God. He has spoken to your situation. If you don't know what he says about your situation, I, you need a promise book. If you've, if, you're, if you've been with us and you've never gotten a promise book from us in our gift bags, we want to put one in your hands tonight. Okay, because you need to start speaking not what your situation is, but what God says is supposed to be. You see, there are times where, man, the emotions get overwhelming on you. And you just, it's like you feel overwhelmed. And the thing you want to do is just speak what you feel. Well, see, Ezekiel here, he didn't know if God could do this. He said, I don't know. But he didn't say, well, okay, Bones, I I guess, well, we're going to kind of try this. No, he just said what God said. You know, we got to stop just what we think you know i know a church building's coming to us because god has said so i don't care what it looks like i don't care if we've written whatever offer all these god said it it's going to be at the exact right time and so i'm going to trust him till it happens right Right? over your situation if you're sick say what god says that hit by his stripes you're already healed you don't have to Psalm 9110, that's what this church has been standing on for two years. It's crazy. It's almost two years. No plague will come near our dwelling. And let me tell you, if it does try and touch you, it is not going to take you out. Right? Because the end of Psalm 91 says, with long life, he will satisfy you and show you his salvation. We got to stop looking at what the world looks at. And we got to start looking at what does God say? Because if we say what God says, we'll get God results. You know, the Bible says that life and breath are in the power of our tongue. But our tongue is the most out of control. The Bible even says it's the hardest thing to bridle. If only we could train our tongue, we would have it made. Right? What are we saying? Man, that spouse who's just not serving God. Are you telling every person you, you know, all of your friends, well, man, they just don't get it. They're just, I can't handle it. I don't know what to do with them. They won't serve God. Or are you like, man, I'm so grateful that that is a righteous God, man of God. I am so glad that that is a righteous woman of God. I thank you, God, that their hands are raised in prayer. They don't know it yet, but man, their spirits are praising you. Amen. You know, we had to go through a season with that with one of our kids where they were in, as a teenager, like in all kinds of stuff. And they'd go out at night and we told them, look, we don't give you our permission. Or we don't, you don't have our blessing. You have permission to make your own decisions. But you do not have our blessing and there's a big difference. But they would go out and, uh, you know, obviously our mind was racing of what are they doing? Where are they going? All these different things. And one night Ralph was like, oh man, he's just going to go hang out with the wrong people. And, you know, what about if there's drugs there and what about blah, blah, blah. And, And I literally just turned to him and I said, shut up. And he's like, I said, we will no longer speak the situation. We will speak God's answer. We're going to frame something here that God can actually do. And so we started speaking and we just started saying, thank you, God, as you go. I thank you that the blood of Jesus is all over him, that angels are protecting him, that no harm will befall him. I thank you, God, that he is a child of God who loves you, who lives to worship you, whose arms are raised in worship to you, that everything about him just loves you with every core of his being. That wasn't what we saw. But every night, that's what we did. And let me tell you, that was the picture that overtook our hearts. We were like, God's got this. Well, you know what? Three months later, he had a literal come to Jesus moment and had a radical encounter with God. 
But what if we hadn't spoken to those dry bones? What God said. And instead we just spoke. There's a lot of death here. Right? So the first thing was he had to speak. The second thing. He invited the spirit of God to fill what his words had created. See, Ezekiel could not give life to that. Only the power of God could. Only the power of God could. And I want you to look at this. What we speak and declare creates a container for the spirit of God to come and miraculously fill. If we don't speak and declare, there is nothing for the spirit of God to fill. Okay, get this. When you speak what God says, you're creating a container for your miracle. You need healing, you start speaking it. You'll create a container for your healing. You need finances, you start speaking blessing and abundance to your finances. You curse that spirit of death and you speak, I think that the Lord has blessing. He said that the windows of heaven are open and I'm going to have a blessing so great I can't even hold it. Whatever it is. You create a container because the problem is we're waiting for God to fill our situation, but we haven't created a container. And God's like, I want to pour out, but if I try, it's not going to go anywhere because there's nothing to fill. You see, our words, what are you saying? What are you declaring? We got to start declaring what God says, because if we declare what he says now, okay, so you're like, well, what does that look like? What do you mean? Let me tell you, in times where we have been in crisis, where we've had children almost die, where we've been in zero finances, where we had no money to eat, what we started doing was going, God, your word says. And we just started speaking his word. And we started putting verses all over our house. We started listening to messages. Literally, it's the only thing. We, we didn't listen to music in, that, in those seasons. We listened to teaching to build our faith. If I need healing, I'm going to listen to healing. If I need financial breakthrough, I'm going to listen to finances. Whatever it is, we started creating and filling ourselves so that what started coming out was what God said and not what we saw. And you're like, well, that's pretty impossible. Like, I don't, that's, I don't know. I think you guys have lost it here. Well, let me tell you, I'm sure Ezekiel was like, I don't know if these dry bones are going to come back to life. Let me tell you, I have seen God do the impossible. I have seen cancers fall off of bodies. I have seen little bones restored overnight. I have seen too much. I have seen mortgages where the bank calls them and says, I don't know, you're $200,000 low mortgage it's just gone they're like well what are we going to do well i can't put it back so you're there's no mortgage you know, like i've seen so much that you can't tell me that there's nothing too big for god to do but what container are we creating what container our words will create the container and then the spirit of god can come miraculously fill it now let me tell you in this our words don't create our miracle. Our words can't do that, but they create the space. We don't have the ability to give ourselves the miracle. We All we have is the ability to create that container and that space for God to come in and fill with his power. Right? With what only he can do. But we have to work in cooperation with him. It's not all God and it's not all us. It's God with us. Right? The Bible says there is nothing, nothing is impossible with God. With God. Okay? So we have to understand, we got to take the limits off what we got, think God is, is capable of, because these were dry, dry bones. Dead, 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 dead. So that means there's, there's hope for your situation, whatever, however dead that might be. I hope you're encouraged and realize that God truly, truly wants to bring those dead things in your life back to life, in your families, in your finances, in your health, in every single part. He wants to bring them back to life, but he is limited because he needs us to work with him. The Bible says that with God, 
all things are possible, not by God. He can do anything he wants, but he uses you and I to do it through. So we need to remember we have to be creating containers for miracles. So that's my challenge to you this week is create containers by speaking the word of God over those areas and make sure you come back next week because I'm going to really dive in and help you understand exactly how to do that. But first things first, the number one thing is make sure you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says you just ask God to forgive you, come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. The Bible says when you say that with your mouth and believe it in your heart, he will show up and radically change your life. I encourage you to do that however you say to him and watch what he does to your life. But I want to pray for you. Maybe you need a miracle and you're saying, man, I'm just in a dry spot right now and I just need a breakthrough. Well, good news, God is in the breakthrough business, so we're going to pray. Just tell, tell God that's me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for each person watching and listening. Lord, I thank you that um, that you know them intimately and that you love them, and I pray that you bless their lives. Do exceedingly abundantly more than they could ever ask, think, or even imagine according to your good purpose for their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you've been enjoying these messages and they've been a blessing to you, I encourage you to share it with other friends. Let them know about this show. Also, you can find all of our shows and much, much more on our YouTube channel, which I encourage you to go check out, share with a friend, and encourage them as well. So we'll see you next week. Have an amazing week. We look forward to seeing you next weekend.